Good afternoon. My name is Tanika, and I will be your conference operator today. At this time, I'd like to welcome everyone to the Navigate to Advantage Access for Introduction to Neurogenic Communication Disorder, Second Edition Conference Call. After the speaker's remarks, there will be a question and answer session. I would now like to turn the conference over to Ms. Grace Richards. You may begin. Thank you, Tanika, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, today, I have with us Rob Houghton, our Educational Technology Consultant, and I'm going to do a brief overview about the book and the Navigate to Access Code, and then Rob is going to go in and show you the actual Navigate Advantage Access Learning Management System, where you'll see some of the student learning tools and the instructor tools as well. Um, but just to start off, um, the, the book and package with Navigate 2 just published in January. We offer the textbook along with an access code for an ebook and the online resources. Uh, we think this is a great value to the students to be able to have both the textbook and the ebook version. The Navigate 2 package is half the price of the textbook package at only uh, $57.95 right now, so that offers a great value for any student that would just like the ebook and the online tools. And today, Rob is going to show you the Navigate 2 uh, tools, and it does include the ebook, as I mentioned. Uh, this specific Navigate 2 package includes videos, so you'll be able to, uh, we'll show you maybe two, two of those just as a sample. Um, also, the students will have a section with a lot of learning tools, some practice activities, flashcards, and there are chapter quizzes that you can assign as well as a section where all the quantitative assessments are automatically graded and you'll get to see the instructor grade book as well. Uh, this is the whole learning uh, management system package that we have for Navigate 2, including the ebook, which has videos embedded right within the ebook. So as the students are reading along and hearing about something, they'll be able to click on the video and take a look at what's being described. Um, as I mentioned, there are knowledge check questions and chapter quizzes uh, for each chapter of the ebook. And you'll see some of the study tools that the students have access to, uh, such as the flashcards, practice activities, and the glossary. And for instructors, we have PowerPoint slides, a test bank, and we'll also show you the uh, reporting section where some of the tests and, and quizzes are automatically graded. And without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Rob so we can start to show you some of these great tools. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rob House, and I'm an education technology consultant here at Jones & Bartlett. Uh, my job is to assist instructors like yourself. So really, uh, day in and day out, we're working with instructors who are using the digital technology, answering whatever questions may arise, as well as, um, candidly, working hand-in-hand -hand with instructors to come up with and develop um, improvements and functional enhancements to the tool based on feedback from instructors like yourself. So we provide on-demand web-based training similar to today's session, but a little more one-on-one -on -one direct where we can answer specific questions, pull up an instructor's course, and kind of go, and kind of go through it and compare apples to apples uh, to make sure that we're all on the same page. As an organization, we also have a U.S.-based customer support number. That number uh, can be accessed, or I should say that group can be accessed from either Navigate2 or jblearning.com, wherever the student would see the term customer support or technical support, that will take them through to that group. And that's really the first line of defense for a student. For you as an instructor, uh, if you choose to use the tool, we ask you to reach out to our team, and uh, the best way to get through to us is at that JBL Solutions at jblearning.com. That email alias comes to our entire team. We are a traveling team, so if you choose to try and get in contact with us, we do recommend you use that alias. It goes to the whole team, and you won't be stuck, hopefully, waiting for someone who might be sitting in an airplane or in an airport somewhere. What we've done with Navigate 2 is we've created a virtual classroom. We've pre-built that for you with the PowerPoints, the PDFs, the Word documents, the flashcards, basically the curriculum components that align with our textbook. That being said, we understand you may want to customize some of our existing content or upload content of your own, and with Navigate 2, we've made that relatively straightforward and easy for you to accomplish. 
The way that this works is that your student receives a unique access code. It's a 10-digit numeric code that comes with their textbook. That 10-digit code unlocks the digital curriculum. So when they go out to jblearning.com and redeem the access code, they're prompted to create an ID if they don't already have one. And then they're given the option of entering what's referred to as an open enrollment course, which is really an out-of-the-box, um, bare bones a, a version of the course. No, obviously, uh, customized components specific to an instructor because it's open to any student who has the book. Uh, if you as an instructor are interested in an instructor-led course, we would create that for you and then walk you through how you might be uh, interested in customizing it, making it your own, so to speak, adding your own components. That instructor-led course would have what's referred to as a course code. Typically, it's a six-digit and it's typically alphanumeric course code that you would disseminate to your students and that they would then associate with their redeemed access code. Both of those pieces are only done once. They redeem the access code and then the course code, and then from that moment on, every time they log in to jblearning.com, they log in with their, just their user ID and credentials, and it puts them into the appropriate class, and we know exactly which student they are based on that course code. All of the Navigate to course material is mobile ready, which means your students can access it from a tablet with no, e with no issues. Um, every Navigate to course also comes in conjunction with an ebook. And as Grace mentioned, our ebook is a rather robust tool with a lot of features and functionality and interactive components. Uh, we're pretty proud of it, and once we're in there in a little bit, you'll see it's a digital version of the textbook that takes things up again to the next level. In order to access the ebook from a mobile device, such as a tablet, you do need an app. It's called the Navigate eReader. It's a free app that's available via the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. So as a, as a user, you could go out, for instance, to the Apple Store this afternoon and look for the Navigate eReader, and this is what you would find. You could then download that tool. That app would then be directly on your mobile device, and that would allow you to access the, the ebook both online and offline. And when we're out in the course in just a second looking at the, the live demonstration piece, that will hopefully uh, be very clear to you. And again, if you do have any questions, you can feel free to pass those along to, to Grace via the chat, and I will try to address those as I'm moving through. So without further ado, what I'm going to do is actually launch a browser. And then I'm going to share my browser with everyone to show you the actual login process so that you and your students can see how easy this will actually be for, for them to ultimately log in. Great. Right now we have all the lines muted, but towards the end we will have a question and answer session, and uh, we'll bring our operator back on to help us with that. So what you see in front of you now is the, is the home or login page at jvlearning.com. Um, once a student has redeemed an access code from this redeem an access code button, they would simply click on the login to their account. I'm currently going to log in as a demonstration uh, instructor account that I have. And in just a moment, it will let me into what we refer to as my My Account page to show me all of the different courses that I have access to. So I'm going to open our Neurogenic Communication Disorders course, and we're going to go ahead and launch this. And this is the course as it's presented, quote unquote, out of the box. So this would basically be what's available in the open enrollment section. Now, for you as an instructor, the first thing you'll notice in your course is there is the Lessons pathway, which is this first tab to the far left. Each of these topic placards contain the curriculum components associated with that particular chapter. So learning objectives, ebook, flashcards, practice activities, slides, lecture outlines, and there's a number of videos, as Grace has mentioned, that are embedded directly into the course in addition to the, to the videos that are included in the ebook. The second placard for Chapter 2 is going to, again, hold the same components but specific to Chapter 2, so on and so forth throughout all the chapters of the book. The next tab is referred to as the Learning Tools Pathway. This is basically the same material that you would find on the Lessons Pathway. So all of the eBooks found in one very easy to find place. And then under the Study Center, you have all of the flashcards, the learning objectives, the practice activities, the slides, and the videos in one easy to find location for the student. This is meant to, again, be a virtual study center. So if you have a student who's more of a visual repetitive learner and they feel, for instance, that flashcards work very well for them, in preparation for a summative exam on chapters four, five, and six, they could come out to this area in the study center and 
and hit those flashcards in one easy to find place in preparation for the exam. So that's really the nature and, and the purpose of that quote unquote learning tools pathway. The third tab is the teaching tools pathway, which gives you access to our test bank, where you have access to both manage items and manage assessment, as well as the essay grading tool. Manage items allows you to simply go in and add, edit, or delete the questions that are currently in the course pre-populated from us as a publisher. So if you want to manipulate one of the questions that we've given you, you don't like the stems, you don't like the identifiers, you can easily do that from this location. If you want to add your own questions, we currently accommodate 17 different question types which you can add into your item bank and therefore have them available for you for testing your students within our assessment. Now again, within Manage Assessments, it works very similar to Manage Items, allows you as the instructor with the opportunity to go in and manipulate the existing assessments, and we provide you with chapter quizzes, as well as uh, midterm and final exams. Also, there are quizzes embedded in the ebook, as well as practice activities in the course. So all of those assessments are actually can be found in, under the Manage Assessments area. And you can choose to use them as they are out of the box or edit them. If you want to change from chapter-driven quizzes to modules or maybe summative exams that cover multiple chapters, you can easily create that type of assessment using our questions, any combination of, or your own questions of your own choosing and creation. If I return to the lessons pathway, I'd like to just walk you through some of the high-level overview components of how you as an instructor can customize the components in the course. So first and foremost, one of the things you can do, just at the top of the page to the right of center, we have the Turn Editing On button. And with one simple click, that's exactly what it does. It enables what we refer to as the icon-based navigation. If I scroll down to any of the applicable placards now, you'll see that at the bottom of the placard, we have four very simple icons. The first is this little four-pointed four arrow that allows you to basically move content. So I can move chapter one in its entirety to a completely separate location. Counterintuitive to move the introduction to any other place. So maybe instead what I'll do is I'll move motor speech disorders here and I want to teach that after neurogenic communication disorders. So that's how easy it is to move that topic placard, and that's what we refer to the little box as, and all of its underlying components with one very easy movement. You can also set a topic as being the current or, oh, excuse me, current or focal topic. So for instance, the second icon is a little push pin, and if I engage it here on chapter two, I'm gonna have a green border around uh, that particular topic. That allows you to highlight that topic as being the current or focal topic for your students. It's just a visual identifier for them when they log in. This is what we're talking about this week. Uh, the third icon is the eyeball. This allows you to hide a topic in its entirety. So I could choose, for instance, to hide chapter three in its entirety from my students. If I now scroll down within chapter six, what I can do if I expand chapter six is see all of the interesting components here, the individual curriculum components, and you'll note that at the top of each one, with the editing on, there's a move resource icon. It's that same four-pointed arrow. So if I wanted to move the learning objectives to be after, for instance, the flashcards in chapter six, or pardon me, after the ebook for chapter six, just as easy as that, I've moved that content. I can also move into another placard. If I wanted to move the learning objectives for chapter six for whatever reason into chapter four, the aphasias, I could very easily do that right here. So it allows you to compartmentalize and modulize content if you don't want to teach along the chapter structure that we've provided in the course. Now, the um, to the right of each curriculum piece, there's an edit option with a drop down. This allows you to get it both edit settings, allows you to move items along the horizontal, to hide a granular option, or to delete it in its entirety. And what I'm going to do right here is I'm just going to scroll down and I'm going to hide the learning objectives for chapter six. And then I'm going to scroll down and I'm also going to hide the lecture outlines for chapter six. 
and then I'll also hide the slides for Chapter 6. Now, because I'm currently in the course as an instructor, I still know that those slides, lecture outlines, and learning objectives are in Chapter 6. They're visible here to me, but they're grayed out instead of this, this bright blue color. This identifies for me that that is a quote-unquote hidden component. Also, under the edit icon, you'll see now that the hide option has converted to a show. If I wanted to subsequently decide to show those to the students, I could very easily just click show, and then that would be made available to all of my students. And what I'm going to do now is show you how easy it is, if I scroll down on the left, to switch my role to a student role so that you can see exactly what it is your students would see when they log into the course. So the first thing we notice is that we no longer have access to the teaching tools pathway. We're not a teacher, we're a student. We've lost access to the turn editing on button, but everything else is in line with what we've done. We see chapter two is highlighted as the current topic. Chapter three is unavailable to my students. It's grayed out. And then chapter six, Within here, we just have the ebook, the flashcards, the practice activities, and the videos. We can no longer see the learning objective, the lecture outlines, or the slides. They've been hidden from the student. Now, while I'm in as a student, I want to just show you here if we toggle over to the learning tools pathway, and specifically within the study center, and we're going to go into the learning objectives specifically, you'll see that chapter six is again hidden. So whatever you hide within the lessons pathway, if it exists within the learning tools pathway, it will also be hidden from your students. So I simply return to the lessons pathway, I scroll down to the left, return to my normal role as a student, and in the upper right hand corner, just to the right of center, excuse me, I turn editing back on and I'm back where I was, able to manipulate course material as I see fit. Now, within a given placard, we're also given the opportunity to add content. And that's the fourth icon that you see, which is an add an activity or resource. So to add an activity or resource, we simply click on the add an activity or resource icon, and that gives us the option of, candidly, activities or resources. An activity is something that's assignable and gradable, meaning it can show up in the gradebook for your students, while a resource is something that you just want to share with your students. We find that a lot of instructors do tend to use the resource option to share things like videos with their students or links to a specific web page. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to select page. I'm going to say add. I'm going to show you how easy it is to add a video directly in. Now, this is specific to apraxia of speech, so I'm just going to add a video. I'm just going to put the word video in the name. Any item that has a red asterisk is a required element, and I'm just going to include the word video. And under the apraxia, I'm just going to put a label here to just say that this is going to be a video on apraxia. And I'm going to scroll down on the page content section. I'm going to hit this little button that says show more buttons and that gives me access to the HTML. Now we're not going to make you do anything all that involved. What I'm going to do here is just launch another browser and really quickly pull up YouTube and we're going to search for apraxia of speech. Whoop. There we are. And we can look for it after stroke specifically. And here we have some, some videos. That Here's one here that talks about the eight-step continuum for apraxia therapy. And if, for instance, I liked this video, I can simply click on it. Now, when I launch this video directly on YouTube, I may be subjected to an advertisement or a banner at the bottom of that video. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to scroll down and I'm going to click where it says share within this video, and I'm going to click the embed option. This reveals the underlying HTML, which is going to allow me to copy that HTML in its entirety, and that's just this section here in the blue. I'm going to return to my course, and in the content section, I'm going to paste that material, scroll down, and simply click, say save and return to course. I've basically embedded that material directly into that Chapter 6 placard. So I scroll down to the bottom now, we'll see the video on apraxia that I have here. And if I launch it, that video is embedded here within the frame of the course. So it's again a great way for you as an instructor to fine tune what material you're making available to your students for them to be able to see specific items without having the slippery slope of being out on YouTube watching a video which could then subsequently lead them down this path where they start clicking on other videos and taking themselves out of their very focused kind of approach to, to learning and allowing themselves to get distracted very easily. Now what I'm also going to do here is I'm going to just pull up We'll Google uh, a website and let's look 
for uh, any kind of website that has to do with apraxia speech. Here we go, childhood apraxia of speech. Now, this is the American Speech Language Hearing Association, and perhaps there's something here that you want to share with your students, but you don't want to have to direct them through this concept of learning more than one language, adult speech and language. Maybe there's something specifically here under advocacy that you're interested in sharing with them. And then here I want to find find information on your state or actually look here under federal ad advocacy, ashes legislative, here we go, voice support. Now if you were trying to direct your student to get to this information, you see that we've already made four or five clicks. And instead, what we're going to be able to do here is take this link, this URL, and copy it. And then we'll go back into our course to the lessons pathway. And within here, and within chapter six, we're going to just say add an activity. And instead of page, you can just select URL and add. And what we're really going to do is we're going to add that link, and I'm just going to put the word link. You can label it however you'd like. For the sake of brevity in today's session, I'm just going to use the word link. I'm going to paste that in. And under display, I personally like the option of embedding it within the frame of the course. And then I say save and return to course. Now, that linkage is going to exist right here at the bottom of our course. And when I click on it, it should open up directly within the frame of the course. There we are. Now, that ASHA Take Action page is right there. This is the actual website. So once here, a user can choose to navigate and stay within the ASHA website, still within the frame of the course. So you can see where you as an instructor can start to add very, very focused material to your students. Perhaps you hear a story on NPR on your way into work and you want to add that to your students. Or perhaps you read or see something on the local news, you read something on the local paper, or something at your institution that you want to pass along to your students should they want to um, delve further into this particular topic. You can make that material available directly within the course via that link tool. Again, really helping you to fine tune what material you're making available to your students. Now, uh, next I'd like to show you how simple it is to simply go ahead and add an assessment or a quiz. Now, for us under activities, we would simply select the quiz option and we would say add. So within chapter six, we're just gonna call this, I'll be really inventive and call this the chapter six quiz. And then as I scroll down, the first option, option I come to here is the review option regarding remediation. This is where we define when and how your students are going to be able to access their responses and answers associated with a quiz, a chapter quiz specifically. So I'm going to set this to after the quiz is closed, I'm going to select the preloaded chapter six quiz. Because we've built the quiz for you, we allow you and afford you the opportunity to customize it however you'd like, but we've preloaded this quiz for you and you can choose to use that quiz. And I can scroll down here. Now, because I've set my remediation options to after the quiz is closed, I need to provide this quiz with a close date. And this restrict access area is available at a granular level for a curriculum component. You can also restrict access to individual chapters, and you can restrict them for a number of different variables. And if I click Add Restriction, you can see I can restrict based on date, based on grade, based on user profile, or a series of nested logic. In short, I can set this quiz up to make it available from March 24th to March 30th, um, and it's only available for students who had an 80% or higher on the Chapter 5 quiz, or whose last names are Richards, for Ms. for Ms. Grace Richards. I can come in here and simply select date, and set my from date, from say the 24th of March, and then I can add a second restriction, which will be my close date. I'll just change the from to an until. We can simply set this as wide or as narrow as we'd like or choose to not add a restriction at all. But for the sake of our, sec our session here, I'm going to say this will be available from, say, 1,300 hours on the 24th of March to 1,500 hours at the two-hour window of opportunity. And then I simply say save and return to course. Now that window of opportunity exists, exists and works like a digital proctor. That assessment will not be available to the students 
until March 24th at 1 p.m. and only until March 24th at 3 p.m. That does not mean that the students have a full two hours to take the assessment. Within the Manage Assessment tool, you as an instructor have the ability to set things like how much time students have, if they're able to skip questions, if they're able to shuffle questions, as well as identifying if that assessment is ADA applicable, meaning if you have students that are ADA students, which you've identified in their profile as ADA, you can award them additional time right there from that specific area within Manage Assessments. So that's how easily you as an instructor can just add a quiz directly into the course. And then that quiz would ultimately be available. Now we can go ahead and launch this quiz now since we're logged in an instructor so we can show you how the assessment presents. So obviously I'm not a neurogenic, neurogenic specialist for speech or disorders. I'm just going to go through and power through these questions very rapidly. And there'll be no judgment, please, because I'm, as I stated, I'm not an expert, just guessing. But this little 10 question quiz, this little assessment automatically exists here and is available for your students once you've assigned it. And once I say submit assignment and I say yes, that assignment will automatically post to the gradebook with that grade. I'd like to point out that in the upper right hand corner, the time remaining that's displayed there, that has nothing to do with the window of opportunity that we stated. This particular assessment just happens to be set to have a two hour uh, assessment length. You can change that within Manage Assessments to 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever you feel is applicable. So I got a 20%, uh, 2 out of 10. Um, that, if I were a student in the class, would automatically be graded, posted to the gradebook, and made available. Once this quiz closes at, 30, uh, at 1400 hours or 2 o'clock on the 24th of March, I will be able to go in and remediate that attempt see exactly which questions I got right and exactly which questions I got wrong. And with the questions I got wrong, it will also identify what the correct answer is. Now I can close that assessment. And if I scroll to the top here, I'm going to just minimize chapter six. And I will show you in our grade book where that grade would actually appear. Again, I'm not logged in as a student. I do have one set of grades in this particular demonstration course for some dummy students that I have set up where they have access to the ebook quiz, and I'll show you that in just a moment. But the chapter six quiz that we just added is now displayed here in the gradebook. You don't have to add it. As soon as you assign it to the course, it appears automatically for your students. We'll return to the lessons pathway. And I'm going to next show you the actual gradebook. Excuse me, the ebook. I apologize. Um, so the ebook is a digital version of the textbook, and as I launch the ebook, for instance, for chapter one, it's going to load up. Again, this is available from a mobile device. Uh, I would tell you that the Navigate e-reader is the required app in order to allow users to be able to access the e-book from a mobile device. I would also share with you in the interest of transparency that the mobile device that we're specifically aiming towards is tablets. While the e-book can very easily be read from a phone, such as an iPhone or an Android-based phone, using the Navigate e-reader app, the assessment tools do not work very well at this point in time based on the rendering of the page and the size of the screen. It works very well with tablets, but we have had some issues with people complaining about the size of the screen, obviously trying to do it from a phone. So we do recommend that if you are interested in using a mobile device, a tablet or a phone works fine for reading the book, but for actually taking any kind of assessments, we do recommend that you do that at least from a tablet and preferably from something like a workstation that has a more hardwired connection. Now, with the ebook and the mobile device, the student and the instructor, the user, can access the ebook both online and offline with the e-reader app. You're given the opportunity when you first connect via the app to work online with a wired connection or a Wi-Fi connection, and then you can subsequently download that book if you'd like directly to your device. If you choose to download it to your device, we push it to you as a flat file without all of its interactive elements. The logic there is that if we pushed it with all of its, excuse me, functioning, excuse me, functionality and features, we'd gobble up most of the space on your device. You wouldn't be very happy with us. We allow you as a user to choose from an a la carte menu which of the downloadable components, if any, you'd like to make available to yourself while offline. So what you see in front of you now is our Chapter 1 ebook 
for uh, neurogenic communication disorders. You'll note that in the margin here, we have this specific little green icon, little circular icon. Any place in the book where you see a circular icon in the margin is what we refer to as publisher-provided content. This is an actual knowledge check. The knowledge check is meant to be a judgment-free area for students to assess their knowledge. So, So I got the first question correct, but the second correct question incorrect. The blue line indicates here that I answered that question correctly. I can review it, see that my answer of true was the correct answer. That for here though, my Parkinson's disease answer was an incorrect answer. It does not identify what the correct answer is. It only points out that my answer was incorrect. That gives the student, again, in this judgment-free area, this does not report into the gradebook to reread this page and then try that knowledge check again. You as an instructor don't really have insight into how the students are answering those questions, but you do have insight from our dashboard analytics, namely our ebook usage report, how much interaction your class has performed or how many times they've engaged that particular knowledge check. So I'm going to just turn the page and we see here another knowledge check in the margin, more publisher provided content, and here we have some videos. Now, many of the videos are relatively long, and we're not going to play through this whole four-minute video on today's demo, but you can see that the video is embedded right here within the ebook, allowing the user to have access to that video while they are engaging the ebook, taking that comprehensive material, um, and hopefully ingesting that knowledge to be able to utilize it on things like the knowledge check or the ebook chapter quiz that comes as part of the ebook. I'm going to just go ahead and close that particular video. You can see there's a second video directly below it. And as we go through to the next page, again, additional material, highlighted material identified. On the right-hand side, we have what we refer to as our navigation bar. Here, you as a user have the ability to add a note. So, for instance, and I'm just going to shut that message off. I'll explain that to you uh, I'll go ahead and explain it to you right now, actually. I'm logged in as an instructor, and it's important to note that everything I'm about to show you on the right-hand side, notations, audio notes, video notes, um, or I should say links to videos or links to an external web page or an internal page reference, all of those components can be performed by you as an instructor, and using our Manage Group feature, you can push that out live to your student's instance of the ebook. And what this message is teaching you here or explaining to you is that you need to utilize the Manage Groups feature to do that. You would simply create a group and manage groups, and then every time you choose, and I'll just add this right here, I'll add that note. Now that note is specific to me as an instructor. I've added it as my note. And if I hover over it, it'll literally say that. It'll just say it's in the my notes group. If I created a group, for instance, for my Tuesday, Thursday, you know, spring 2016 class, I could create that note and it would sit right here. And you can see under add new annotations, that note set would be an option. I could select that note and then anytime I made a customization here in the textbook as an instructor, that customization will be pushed forward to the members of that group. What's great about this and the reason that message was there is that when we copy your course from term to term, we copy those groups and customizations along with that. What that means is that my, for instance, spring 2016 Tuesday Thursday group would carry forward. So the next time I teach the course, I could simply add students from that new course into that group and then they would be able to see those customizations within their version of the ebook. You'll notice also that when we add a customization to the ebook, it shows as user provided content with a teardrop shape icon instead of the circular icon that you see. You can add an audio note up to three minutes a piece. You as an instructor can do this and make that available to your students. You can add, uh, for instance, a web link. And if I come out here, I can add the ASHA web link that we had earlier and add that directly into the course. We can also add a page link. So perhaps there's something here on page eight that ultimately dovetails nicely with something I see later on page 45. And I can create a little cross-reference for myself and save that. I can also share the ebook as a full screen. And I can escape out of that. 
I can change the layout from the current two to a one-page layout. I can zoom in and out with the magnifying glass. This allows me to literally zoom in as far as I'd like, making it more level, excuse me, legible. I can then also zoom back out. I can choose to hide the annotations, hiding all of those notations that are there, or make them visible to myself. I'll go ahead and unhide them. I can draw with a pen. I can also highlight within the textbook, as many of us are used to doing with a physical, physical book, back in the age of Methuselah. And then we've gone ahead and we've highlighted material directly in the book. And I can choose to simply save those pieces and now those customizations have been saved to my notes. Again, you as an instructor have the ability to do similar customizations, pushing them out using the Manage Groups feature to your students. Now, on the left-hand side here, under the Resources tab, which is a little uh, icon that has the musical notes, this is going to show you all of the components that are included in your course right out of the box. So here we have on the Media section all of the publisher-provided content the knowledge check, some videos, additional knowledge checks. Here's a link to the American Speak Language Hearing Association, Center for Disease Control, Recovering from Stroke, more knowledge checks, and you'll also see periodically for each chapter a chapter quiz. This is the chapter ebook quiz. It's included in the ebook. It's available to your students from day one. They're able to take these quizzes. These quizzes do report into the grade book. You don't have to grade them. You can very easily, if you'd like, set up a category in a weighted grading kind of concept to then allow your students to take these ebook quizzes, but maybe not count them towards their final grade. Maybe they exist as an extracurricular or an extra credit opportunity. All of the items you see on the media tab are linked. So if I click here and I'm brought to this page, this will show me the actual linkage, and I'm able to then launch that if I'd like. I can launch this video here. Um, Again, all of those resources available directly from the Resources tab under the Media section. And this is, again, all the publisher-provided content that is part of the ebook out of the box. The second tab that you see here is the My Stuff tab. These are the things that I've added as a user. Obviously, just here today, I added this cross-reference. I added the highlight, the ASHA link, and then this study for the final notation I added for myself. I can segregate these out so I can see all of my notes near the end of the term to prep for studying, any of the web links I've added, cross-references, audio notes if I have, or highlights. And then here within the study for final, if I click on it, it's going to take me right to that page, and here's my note available for myself to see that that, subject, that material is something that the professor stressed, and I probably want to make sure I study it for the final. Now, everything that I've seen here, again, I can very easily choose to save, and then that's synced with the hosted environment and available for both myself as, an, as a student or as a user, I should say. But all of that engagement, including the time, the resources, the annotations, is all available here from our reports and grades section under the ebook usage report. The ebook usage report by default is going to show us the most recent 30 days worth of activity. So this particular demo course is going to have a couple of students in it, dummy students of my own, who've taken a single uh, ebook quiz and spent some time in the ebook. Now again, this information would be very, very helpful to you as an instructor, and I'm showing you really a demonstration of a small subsample of what could be accomplished. This is going to show you, again, the most recent 30 days of activity. And due to the WebEx, it takes a little longer than normal to spin up. But once it does display, it's going to be a very nicely put together graphical display that shows you your most and least popular chapters, again, for the most, the most recent 30 days. So I can see that Chapter 2 is my most popular. It's been viewed almost 200 times. Chapter 1 has been viewed 22 times. Chapter 8, 11. And then 3, 6, and 9 have each been viewed once. So one page has been viewed. The best performing chapter is chapter two, and my class's average grade on that ebook chapter quiz is a 77. As I scroll down here within class engagement, I can see the number of hours spent by chapter, resources viewed, and annotations made by the class. I can see that chapter two is far and away the largest and most viewed chapter. And here I can see who my best and worst performers are in the class. Now again, this is a dummy class with only three students. We would expect the worst performers to also be populated. But what you can see here is the amount of time spent by an individual student, resources viewed, 
annotations made, and then their grade achieved. So this, uh, this student here, Holden, he has 100% on the ebook chapter quiz, or in the class as a whole at this point. He's made two annotations, five resources he's viewed, and he spent over two and a half hours. Gus has only viewed four resources, a very short window of time, less than half an hour, and he's achieved an 80%. Ferris here has a two point, uh, two and almost two, uh, two and a half hours again, seven resources, 12 annotations, but his grades are 50%. So hopefully what we'd like to be able to discern from this is how are the students using this material? And from the class engagement graph, I click on any one of these bars, and what it's going to do is bring me into what we refer to as the student engagement comparison. This is, again, another graphical display showing you the most recent 30 days of student engagement across the course. <coughs> Excuse me. It's chapter specific, so you can toggle between the chapters and see which students are doing what in which chapters. In this particular environment, it is a dummy, uh, excuse me, a dummy course with demo data, but I can see that, for instance, chapter one, student Fring has spent a little bit of time in here, viewed some resources, and Student Bueller, a little less time. Also, again, some resources and annotations have been made here. But I can change my chapter. And what we're going to do is we're going to select Chapter 2, and we're going to wait for this to populate, and it should be pulling up. And I think Chapter 2 was the quiz I, I took with this particular group of students. It's going to be able to show me specific to Chapter 2 the number of hours spent, resources viewed, and annotations made. And then under the comparison, it's going to show me by student the number of pages viewed, resources viewed, and then their grade on the ebook chapter quiz. And here we are. So I can see again that Holden has spent over two hours, he's viewed three resources, made two annotations. Ferris spent about an hour and a half, six resources, 11 annotations, Fring, very little time, and two resources. And if I scroll down here, I start to be able to really start to graphically see how that information can help both the students as well as myself as an instructor. So again, I can see how many pages Holden viewed, resources, and then his grade. I can see that Ferris here has viewed a lot of those pages. He's six resources and only a 50% on that ebook chapter quiz. So from this, I might be able to tell that Fring hasn't spent a lot of time in the ebook, but he's getting about an 80%. To help push himself a little more, maybe spend some more time in the ebook and really absorb that material. Um, Coalfield seems to be doing just fine, obviously, with the 100%, but Bueller seems to be struggling. He seems to be going over this material, again, specific to this chapter, 122 page views. He's viewed six of the applicable resources, and he still only got a 50% on the ebook chapter quiz. So our thought process is you'll be able to see the students who are putting time and effort in and then sub subsequently getting positive results, as well as the students who are maybe struggling but putting the time and effort in. Um, you'll be able to approach them and hopefully improve a student outcome ahead of something like a major exam. Uh, also identifying the students who aren't putting the time and effort in and may subsequently also be struggling, but you now have a data point to point out to them why potentially they're having that difficulty. The most viewed resources is going to be identifying for you exactly which of these knowledge checks, or in this instance, the Chapter 2 quiz, how many times that's been viewed, additional knowledge check 2.2, and then this is the actual videos. So a number of the videos have been viewed here by these students. So we can see the most, and then ultimately in your class, you would hopefully see some least viewed as more and more students are engaging more and more of the material. So again, that ebook usage report is the first of our dashboard analytic reports, and our thought process there is to give you as an instructor actionable real-time data as to how your students are engaging the digital material. Now, one of the last things I want to show you before we open ourselves up for questions and actually then subsequently get back into the PowerPoint presentation or the slides um, is how easy it is for you to add content directly into the course. Now, our tool uses what's referred to as a responsive design. If I go to the upper right-hand corner here and I select the Restore Down option, I want you to watch the folder tabs across the top, the Lessons, Learning, and Teaching Tools pathways. You'll see that they change, they shift into what we would refer to as banners. This is because our tool uses what's referred to as a responsive design. And as I continue to shrink the size of the screen, the tool is responding to the size of my viewable screen. If I expand it back out, I will that yet again, 
have access to all of those components. If you ever tried to visit a website on your smartphone that doesn't utilize a responsive design, you know how frustrating that can be. So our utilization of responsive design is to allow you to use a mobile device and still get at the pertinent applicable information when needed. Now here within Chapter 1, what I'm going to do is show you how easy it is to add your own PowerPoints. Now I have a couple of PowerPoints here and I'm going to share a folder from my desktop. You can see I have an Improving Outcomes and Test Readiness PowerPoint here that I'm going to just pull over and I'm literally going to drag and drop that directly into the course. And that's how easy it is for you to add your own content directly into the course. Here I'm going to grab a PDF that I have on my desktop and I can pull that into the course. You can do the same things with Word documents, Excel documents, obviously PowerPoint slides, whatever the case may be, PDFs, to basically make the course yours. We're, we're not instructors. Um, we're here to provide you with a tool with, with which you can decide which pieces work best for you and make it really easy for you as an instructor to decide which of your own long existing and long standing components you want to continue to use within our digital environment. Um, I'm going to invite our operator, Tanika, back to help us take some questions from all the participants. Your first question comes from the line of Nancy Kohick. Hi. I'm just wondering, this is great information, really helpful, but I'm also wondering if there's anything in print that we can use as a resource to go back to as we're setting up our own courses. I guess that's my first question. Okay. So the first thing I would tell you is that, yes, there is. Right here in the upper right-hand corner, we have access to a help, and that's a great question. Thank you very much. Um, I apologize for not mentioning this earlier. We have a 93-page help document that's here. It is linkable, uh, or I should say linked. So if you click in the table of contents, it will bring you directly to that section so you can read that very well uh, thought out and documented help. I would also tell you, though, that um, if you have questions, uh, there, is, there is probably some marketing material available for you that Grace could make available to you, but reaching out to our team, this is literally what we do. We spend time with instructors. If you have a question, I would err on the side of caution. Give us a call, send us an email. We're happy to walk you through it and help you. Um, we're a very responsive group. Uh, you know, we're spread across the country um, and available really whenever you need to have something taken care of. We're happy to set up a webinar like this, but there is an online help in the upper right-hand corner available for you. Okay, thank you. No, thank you. In today's webinar, I, I believe that Grace has recorded this, so it will be made available to you should you want to have it as a reference point to kind of go back to. I do move pretty fast. Unfortunately, there's a great deal of material included in the learning management system, um, and we're trying to make sure that we cover as many pieces as possible. So I fly at about 30,000 feet and very, very quickly. But um, obviously, again, if you do have follow-up questions, please feel free to reach out. We find that that's really the most valuable instance is once the student, or excuse me, the instructor has their course and they've gone in and poked around a little bit, more things start to come to light, right? Because again, I, I flew very high and touched on probably the, the key 25% of the components. Things like forums and questionnaires can all be added into this course. You just need to reach out to us and ask us how to do that and we'll walk you through it if you want. We do have a follow-up question from the line of Nancy Kohick. Okay, I am interested in creating an instructor-led course versus the um, data general course, and I think I've done this with a different text for another class. How can I go about getting that set up sooner than later? So as you're suggesting, I want to start putting together my course. I'm not using it for a few months, but I need to play with it, be familiar, figure out what I want to change, add, and you know, provide information to my students so they know how to navigate. So that's a really great question, and first and foremost, I'd like to commend you for saying that you want to get it a couple of months ahead of time. Um, invariably, we do have people that may wait, unfortunately, to the last minute. We do accommodate those requests, but I'm thrilled and happy to work with you as soon as possible. I'm not sure where you're located, Nancy, but I'm sure Grace can find us that information and we can make sure your sales rep gets in touch with you. It's a simple request to the sales rep and we can happily spin the course up for you. Um, candidly, the course we're looking at here today with all the customizations that you see in it, specific to the ebook quizzing and notations and things like that, I created this course this morning. It took me about eight minutes. 
So I can spin up a course and have it ready for you very, very quickly. We just need you to go through the standard process here with the sales rep so we can ensure we've dotted all the I's and crossed the T's. The one thing that's great is if you have used Navigate 2 in the past, your existing uh, instructor credentials, this new course will simply be linked in there. And that first page where I logged in, which was the My Account page, will ultimately list out all of the different courses which you have access to okay. as both a student great. and an instructor. All right, great, thank you. You're very welcome. And Nancy, I sent you a private message to let me know your school, your email address, and your phone number. And as Rob said, we'll have your account manager get in touch, set you up with a course code and an initial training. As Rob said, once you go in and you start looking around, if you have more questions, we're always happy to come back in. That's kind of how I learn. I usually like to have a demo, go play by myself, and then I realize once I'm doing it, I have more questions. And as Rob said, you know, you're always welcome to have another training session or call, ask a question, get some help. We, we have many instructors that I have, I have an instructor actually at Yale New Haven Hospital that I speak with weekly. And that's perfectly fine. It's, it's just a standing thing. We expect it, and I, I do understand it. There is one thing I, I regrettably didn't touch on, and I do want to make everybody aware of. Um, our LMS takes advantage of some other third-party learning management solutions, namely Blackboard. We take advantage right. of the Blackboard Partner Cloud. So if your institution is using Blackboard already as its broader institution-wide um, LMS, we can integrate using an LTI, which is a learning tools interoperability, and put our digital content, literally what you've seen here today, would exist via a link in your Blackboard shell. What that means is that your students and you don't have to remember yet another user ID and password. We would work with your administrator to set up the LTI, and then once that's configured, we work with you as an instructor to actually set the linkage up. The administrator piece, we have a document we can send them. And most administrators like to do that themselves. They get back to us and say they're all set. And then we work with the instructor. It can take literally five to 10 minutes. That's it. And then your course exists within your existing Blackboard shell. Students click on it. Um, they, once they redeem their access code, what it's basically doing is it's marrying their Blackboard credentials, user ID and password, with their JBL credentials. So it works like a translator, basically. It's a simple pass-through. They click on that link, and then they're brought directly into Navigate 2. Nothing more for them to do. And ultimately, their course total grade is automatically passed back into the Blackboard gradebook. You can choose to not use that grade. You can choose to use the gradebook as it exists in Navigate. It can be exported out to a CSV file. And we are currently in conversations with both Canvas and D2L to mimic that LTI functionality with them. Um, at the end of the day, they're the gatekeepers. And uh, ultimately, if you are at an institution that's using those and you really are interested in using and integrating some of our texts within that platform, reach out to your rep and let them know because obviously the more people that are telling them they want to use our content, the more readily available we can make it to the, to the greater good and, and um, the wider whole kind of institution-wide <laughs> um, uh, discipline, right, for, for um, neurogenic communication disorders. Um, so we use Moodle presently. So if we're using Moodle, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if it's better to integrate it into Moodle. Do you do the same thing? Or just to have the students log in and go? This is what I would tell you about Moodle is that our tool is basically actually a Moodle-based tool. So right. a lot of the functionality is something you're going to obviously be very familiar in with. We right. feel that we've made it a little more intuitive and um, certainly a little more uh, user-friendly. And we also wanted it to be a little more scalable and flexible and have more of a plug-and-play mentality. What, what we mean by that is that as new technologies become available, um, we've worked with a number of different resources globally um, and entities to try and start bringing more and more technology into certain courses, respiratory care courses to have simulations embedded in them that allow the student to hear lung crackles and have a little um, virtual reality patient that they can work with. Those types of technologies and those types of tools, we feel that this tool is better positioned than Moodle was to accommodate those changes, those enhancements, and those adaptations. And, and we don't currently really integrate with Moodle. You could work with your sales rep, but it, we could give you basically some of the publisher piece, some of the uh, instructor-specific pieces. 
uh, learning objectives, lecture outlines, PowerPoint slides, things like that that you could then subsequently ingest into your Moodle environment. But things like the ebook, the flashcards, and the assessment engines, those would always unfortunately be staying within Navigate 2. Okay. I'm suspecting that that would be unnecessary work, really. Why not just have them log in and go? That would be my response to that. Yeah, I would say if we were giving you an LMS that, that works, I yeah, would say why? that works. Okay. Why fix it if it's my not broke? Right, yes. Nancy, did you have any other questions? We'll definitely have your rep get in touch and um, get you started. We're so glad that you're excited to use Navigate 2. No, I think it's a good opportunity. It was right timing for me, and I'm really interested to launch into this I think I'm going to do it as a fully online course, so that will be interesting too. I mean, my reviews could suck, but we'll see how it goes. Okay. Great. Can I ask where you're located, Nancy? I'm in Los Angeles. Okay. Thank you. So I guess one other question would be, and maybe I go through Kimberly to find out the answer to this, I think she's my rep, would be maybe just to connect with um, another professor who has been using it as an online course just to get some feedback, I think, is uh, it's interesting to see what the hiccups were. Yeah, absolutely. Kimberly, I'm sure, could do that. Um, and if, again, if you'd like to set up another call, what, I think the, probably the best instance would be to get you set up with a course instance, let you play in it a little bit, and then we can set up another, another conversation. I'd be happy, candidly, to share with you some of the hiccups. Um, okay. I don't have a problem with that. I think that there's nothing like transparency to help improve a product, specifically a digital product. Right. And I don't even mean so much your um, your issue technologically. I mean, yep, there can be hiccups from the students from, not understanding a process. How do they use this? Yeah. I completely understand. So from right, both yeah. sides, absolutely, we're here to help. Okay, Robert, that's really helpful. Thanks, Nancy. Okay. Any other questions? There are no further audio questions at this time. Okay. I think we'll wrap up, and I have one slide with some contact information up on your screen now. You can see a page where um, you can go and learn more about the textbook and navigate to package, and that URL is go.jblearning.com slash manasco2, M-A-N-A-S-C-O-2. That's the author's last name. And you can also find out uh, your account manager uh, via a web page, go.jblearning.com slash find a rep. Or from our homepage, jblearning.com, there is an icon, contact your rep. Or you can call us at any time at 800-832-0034. Uh, your account manager is available to help. I'm the marketing manager, Grace Richards. I'm always here to help. And Rob is our best person that's able to help uh, with the training sessions and to ask any questions and help you get your courses set up. So I want to thank everyone for attending, and we hope you will enjoy using this resource in your course. Have a great day.